first yard of the week. Here we go. Oh, the squirrels are having fun. They're all over. Check this out. Not only is this going to be a dusty mess, a mulch up, but I'm telling you guys, I'm being watched. I know they're watching me. They know about my channel. But look, I made those comments about the yard and it changed. And I, they finally cut down, they trimmed all the bushes, cut down all those wacky things and piled them out by the street. I'm making a difference by pointing out the obvious. <laughs> oh gosh, time for the dust man. Alright, here we go. Now I'm going to walk you through this since the pattern that I'm using can be very confusing. So the discharge of my chute is to the right side of me. I'm going around this tree and I'm protecting its landscape. I blew out all the leaves from there too, so you can see my handheld blower is still sitting in there. And now when I come back up, I have my chute blocker kind of half mass so that it doesn't let it go all the way up into those bushes because I also walked around behind them bushes blowing everything out. So that's one of my other goals is to protect the front of the house and any leaves from going back up under there and having to blow it all out again. And one of the ways I do it is I'm coming back down the same path that I just mowed. Now the grass isn't very tall, so that's a bonus. It's really just cutting up these leaves and getting rid of them, but I'm not doing a cleanup. I'm not taking any leaves with me. So this is how I do that when I'm not going to bring any leaves away and go to a dump. That's a whole nother process. So this pattern is just to protect, you know, the front of the house and everywhere that I've already mowed. I don't want to have to like do quadruple cuts on areas. <laughs> I might have to do some triple cuts. Like right now, I'm coming up through here and I'm just hitting the real thick stuff, trying to get it down into more of a powder. Now I go back up. And that's four passes wide so far with my 48 inch cut mower. So that's a pretty good section of the front yard to have cleaned off. Again, I'm not taking any of these leaves with me. Now we're on the front half of the lawn. So we're halfway done, but this area can be more tricky than the first part because I'm gonna have to do some triple cuts on areas just because like right now, I'm going over a thick area, which I'm going to be mowing over at least once or twice more. And I'm going to turn. I think this area looks real thick. Uh, I'm going over it, trying to take some of the crunchiness and, you know, the leaves off of it to where they're still there, but they're not going to blow around as much. And now one of my other tips is when you go backwards, you don't have to go back and forth as much. So I'm pulling back, sucking them in and blowing them out in the direction that I want them to go. And then I just have to go boom, forward right here. Now, when I turn around that area that I pulled back on, it went backwards on, I can just go right over and the little pieces that are left, they're not gonna dirty up the front part of the lawn that I already done, so we're all good there. Now, when I go back down, I'm thinking, okay, that's a real good chunk, only a third left. Now that strip right there, that's at least three passes I've been on there. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pull back here just to keep them wrangled in the area that I want. Again, I'm wanting to get them all ground up good enough 
that they can just kind of scatter and disperse without taking anything away. I don't even want to take a trash can full away. You see, this is just a regular weekly visit for this lawn, and that's how many leaves came down within the week. So this isn't anything like a true cleanup on this yard. If it was a real cleanup, I would have had to wait a couple weeks at a time at least, and there would have been a ton of leaves down, and it would have taken a long time, and I would have charged a lot more to do it. And if it's the middle of the week cut, I don't have that time. I don't want to go cut a yard that takes 25 minutes and then another one takes 25 and then pull up at a two-hour cleanup. I, I'm not dealing with that right now. Not this part of the year, okay? That's later on when there's just a few straggler things left. <laughs> That's when the real cleanups come. So right now, I'm pulling up for a weekly cut and I know this front yard, because they have one giant oak tree, is going to take me a little bit of extra time. The bonus is it's nice and cool out here. It's not cold and it's not hot. It's just right. Let's put it this way. In the springtime, I have a day with 12 lawns and I go out and I deal with the hot, you know, super fast, thick growing grass. All the edging needs to be done. And I'm going down these sidewalks and I'm like cutting through edging every week again. <laughs> and I have to go around every obstacle, trim around it. It's super thick. And like I said, I might have to do double passes and cuts because some of these lawns in the spring could be cut twice a week or at least every five days. But your customers aren't going to have you do that. You're going to be there once a week and you might be a day late. So an eight day growth when you could have done it in five. Yeah, you might have to do some double cuts and all the extra work and even you know up in through june and july you're still having to stop and trim a bush here and there and things like that so in the spring those 12 lawns them same 12 in the fall could take you minimum you get an extra two hours of your day back it makes up for all that extra hard work in the spring this is when you get your reward all right so if it took you 10 hours or eight hours before now it's going to take you eight or six hours two hours less to do the same 12 lawns and maybe in sometimes in the spring you were literally taking three hours longer than you were now because of all the other ricky ticky stuff that came down branches and like i said they came out and said hey can you trim the bushes again we got some people coming by and you're like okay you know wasn't expecting it but they grow they grow like crazy you think oh i'm gonna cut it Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. Well, there's an extra one in there because of the wild growth. This is the time of year where it makes up for all of that. You do the same lawns and you get done a lot quicker and you have better days and I love it. Minus the dust from the leaves. <laughs> but it's not that bad because I have quit picking up lawns that have a million trees in them. I learned that right off the bat. When I first started to just take on any lawn that I could get my hands on, I ran into a lot of problems. And I realized quickly that a lot of these lawns were coming to me because they were rejected by the other lawn services. And unfortunately, a few times it was because they stiffed the other lawn guys and I never got paid either. Now right here, I'm picking up my handheld blower. And you know, I suggest this every time you're messing with leaves, blow off your mower. Like I still haven't done the backyard. I'm gonna go do that here in a minute. And I'm going to make sure I get all these leaves from off of the top of the engine, around the blower, and definitely under the deck because it will knock your deck belt off. It could actually snap your deck belt. Then you're in trouble, okay? So you don't need to deal with that. Always blow off your mower. And look, all those leaves that were on here, one handheld blower is kind of just taking care of everything. And I have the little boulevard area. And when I get done and I make a few more passes on it and blow everything off, it's going to look great. If it's not perfect, well, it doesn't need to be. Look at the yard behind there in the distance. Look at their street, okay? That's a circle curve right there. Theirs is just covered with full leaves. You can't even see their sidewalk. So yeah, this lawn is gonna look great. Now back to what I was saying. I was taking on any and every lawn I could get my hands on and I didn't think it through properly and I'd take on a yard that had three giant oak trees in their backyard and they had a small access gate. So I couldn't even have gotten proper equipment back there if I did have it, and I didn't have it, okay? So I had to do things the super hard way. And I also quit taking on lawns that had 
50 hedges and bushes and trees and things that they wanted me to keep up with, all this cool stuff, I wasn't the guy. I was unprepared for that. And it takes longer. And when you get to where you want to go ahead and just bang out 12, 14, 16 yards in a day, you don't have time to stop and do, you know, 10 bushes at this yard, 12 at the next yard, stuff like that. It's just, you got to narrow it down. Okay, whoa. Ah, here's the yard you've seen me do before. Looks a little different now, doesn't it? <laughs> I dropped every bit of it, but there are plenty more leaves coming down the street. Oh man. Oh. I'm not gonna bother filming it, but the wind is blowing um, in situations like this where the, the yard's covered and say these trees were shedding right now, which you're going to see in some later videos, you might, um, you could cut the whole yard, mulch it all up, and by the time the people come home from work, it looks like you weren't even there. <laughs> but you want paid. And they're like, hey, did he even show up? Like, look, there's leaves blowing all over right now. And if they're a new customer, you know, you gotta be leery of that. So make sure you take a picture, you guys. Like when you pull up, you get your cell phone out, just snap a before picture and an after picture. And then, um, you know, if you're allowed to, you know, text them, say, hey, I'm at your house, and, and send them that first pic, and then, you know, leaving, and then send them that pic too, or save it for, you know, email it to them later on that day or whatever. Just let them know your work ethic and what you did because my people, they don't even second guess me. They know that I did something. Even if it was covered right back up, and they know that I whoop some ass on the leaves and grass, all right? <laughs> but I've, I've had that a lot and you'll see that on a couple yards. I do know that I will be cutting it and halfway through, I get towards the sidewalk and the other parts are already covered with leaves or the wind's blowing and just circulating it the whole time. What do you do? Just buzz over it. <laughs> okay, tell me if it looks like it's been trimmed because I trimmed first. <laughs> oh, look at that edge. You can't beat it. How can you beat it if you can't see it? Up, lay down a perfect edge. It's there. Pull it to the end. I'm gonna blow everything around out into the yard and out of the cracks and then start mulching. Look at this freaky yard. I've never been here. I've never cut this before. But I said I will help them out. I can come right in the gate. This is the old part of town. Freaky stuff, huh? It's a new adventure. I'm um, good friends with one of the other customers and um, I said I'd help them out. So we'll see what, what happens. I don't think I can film though, because if they come pulling in, I don't want them to see the camera and get all freaked out. But I guess I'll give you an after picture if they're not here. I wanted to give you an after picture from the, the giant leaf yard where the wind was blowing, but the neighbor came out and I didn't want him being like, what are you doing? Because you know, I have a little concerns and worries about neighbors nowadays. <laughs> what you looking at? Okay, all done. When I cut down, this was in the fence line. I did her a favor. She was very appreciative of it. She said she gave me a little bit extra. I have, um, she put this in the door. So she's gonna give me extra because she saw me out here doing that. So I cut all that crazy stuff down from there. I don't know. It's another one of those ugly yards. But hey, ugly yards have 
pretty money. Well, not really pretty money. I found, I think it's a penny. A penny, I need a tip. Maybe I lost it. What's that? That's not a penny. Hmm. I guess I lost it. Back to the, um, oh, here it is. Now, is that a pretty penny or what? Let's check out our loot. Let's see what we got. Looks like, yeah, looks pretty good to me. Pretty good. Still cruising right along. The wind's not cooperating with me too good, but that's to be expected. So here I am, gonna do another leaf filled yard, and I'm just gonna blow everything away from, you know, off the porch and all around out here. Uh, I'll blow all this stuff out of the curb up onto the boulevard, and then just um, mulch it. And it's not gonna look perfect. I might double cut like right up in here, but then out farther I won't double cut because. I'd be here, you know, too long and I'm just going to get paid the regular price because that's the deal I give them so that I get to keep coming. I'll still be here three more times and, you know, it's almost Halloween, so it's almost October, the end of October, so I'll get three November cuts out of the deal for sure. And, uh, whew, windy. That's kind of what I do, you know. I prefer that instead, or if you don't do that and get your three cuts and make it sort of easy on yourself and just be happy you're working in November, then they will, they'll just wait and have you do it all at once and you'll actually come out, you know, they'll, you'll lose money on the deal because you might be able to charge them like 75 bucks or something for a cleanup because they're not gonna pay a hundred something bucks for a cleanup. And then you will, um, you kind of, you know, shot yourself in the foot because that's less than if you did it three cuts, you know, so. That's what I'm doing. I don't really want to do it right now, but gotta do what you gotta do. Time to put my mask back on. Okay, I'm gonna give you a close-up view right here. First of all, I always do this little front section with the small mower because there are some dips where there used to be trees and I can scalp it with the 36 even. So I just um, do that here, but with this amount of leaves, it just um, don't expect it to look perfect but it's gonna look a lot better. See already how, that's just how it's gonna to have to be, you know? And it's gonna end up like that all the way across, probably even worse out in here. Um, I can't make a triple pass on these. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not an option. And you know, that's not gonna look great either. But what it's gonna do is, just look at that now, and it's all gonna look like this. So yeah, it's gonna be a big improvement but it's not gonna be perfect. So let's take a close up and see, um, see exactly how this goes. So I get out the handy dandy 21 inch mower and I make my first pass up against the house here and I pull back through the same row. I'm doing this because I could feel them building up like right there. It was almost bogging my mower down for a second. So I knew they weren't mulched up properly. So I wanted to make sure they got a double cut, at least for these first few passes where they were extra thick. And up against houses and fences and stuff, the wind doesn't blow them away. It blows them into those areas and they kind of stay there. Now out by the front of the yard, they, uh, you know, they're more affected by the wind and everything around there. And they kind of blow away and they're not as thick. It all kind of just bunches up in certain areas on a yard and each yard's different, you know, it depends on what the surrounding area is like. If you had a big wall next to this, you know, yard right here, I guarantee you it would have all the leaves up against it. That's just how things are. 
And again, I like to do this little front section with the small mower because I have scalped it in spots um, using the bigger mowers before because there's a little hill right here. I'm going up and down it and out in the middle, there was a tree a long time ago and I filled it in with dirt before, like thrown some dirt here and there and it keeps sinking in and sinking in. So if you hit it the wrong way and get like a caster wheel or one of your rear tires in it when you're using a bigger mower, you take a big chunk out of the yard and then if it's you know at the wrong time of the year it might not grow back that season and it looks bad and you know you just don't like to do that again i'm used to doing stuff like this so the extra few passes doesn't bother me because i'm here it's a weekly lawn and i get to go all the way through the season with it so until the last leaf is off the lawn and the snow is coming down i get to show up every week and that way, I also don't have a big cleanup. I've, you know, like I said before, so many yards, you kind of gauge it out. You think, okay, is it more beneficial to get eight cuts these last two months? Or is it better to just wait and do one big cleanup? Well, I don't like doing the big cleanup. So I prefer to just show up every week and mow, you know. Again, I'm not taking any of these leaves with me. I'm mulching them up. Now this side over here, that's a different story. It's pretty thick and I have to um, be kind of careful here because again, you know, the thicker the leaves and the crazier you get, the more um, messy it can be. What I mean by that is that the thicker the leaves and the uh, freakier the style of leaves, because trust me, there are different kinds, all right? A sycamore leaf will just, boom, create a big dust storm. And some of these other ones are kind of gummy, even when it's not wet. But if they are wet, like after a rain, it's really not worth mulching them because they just turn into mush. But here, it's dry, it's going to be a dust cloud, and they're going to chop up really good. All I have to do is just go back and forth. And what I was saying was that I might have to do even more passes than normal, not just the down and back the same path. We're talking five, six, you know, <laughs> zip overs in a certain area just to turn it all to powder and make it disperse without killing the grass or causing too much of a ugliness. Now, the good thing about this little area right here is that it's really not owned by anybody but the city. There used to be a house here, it burnt down, and now both neighbors kind of always cut it because the city would just cut it two, three times a year and it was always ugly. So once I took over the yard, she'd pay me extra to cut half of this, and then whenever they come out and mow, they cut the other half. But really, all these leaves are from those trees that used to be on this property. Whatever house was here, they were getting hammered with all these leaves. You can see them along that fence there. Um, those are the trees that are bringing all this extra work over here, which is cool for me because the yard might not grow that much in October or November, but they still want me weekly to come by and mulch up the leaves. So, hey, it's a good deal. It's a win-win. It looks good for them, and I don't charge them a whole lot extra. What? Oh, man. Whew. Okay. It looks ugly. Okay, first of all, this is not her property. And it's not their property. They always do their half, and they always do half of it out of courtesy, and she does half of it. She pays me to do half of it, just so that the city doesn't have to come by and they'll wait till it's two feet tall and then the city comes and hacks it down or something, you know? So everybody sort of maintains it. Same for the other side. So I didn't clean out from underneath it here, but I will on the last one of the year. It's not necessary right now because just a second ago, the wind came and it was like it was snowing. All these leaves were coming back down. So you can see I already cut it and there's more leaves. The whole street is filled with leaves. I mean, not the boulevard for here, but I blew it back up in here. It is what it is. See, this isn't her property either, but she wants me to buzz over it, and I do it. I mean, look, there's there's leaves everywhere in the street. All of these are coming down. One, two, three giant oak trees right here, and they're already down over here. And the last three years, He's had me mulch up his leaves because his mower won't do it. So, 
There's all kinds of like little weird situations you get involved in. I don't mind having a few of these yards that are just filled with trees and leaves because they give me work throughout November. I'll be here. You know, I could, I've even been here in December just because it was nice enough that I could come get another one in and they're like, oh yeah, come on by, mulch them up, you know? But I don't want too many of them because I'll never get them all done, not with the running out of daylight hours. And um, you gotta have a mix of everything, you know, a mix of the yards that are gonna go all the way through. There's gonna be some that's gonna burn up. You're gonna have your crabgrass yards. And then you're gonna have your leaves. It's pretty cool. Look at all that leaves. I really don't like doing leaves, but you know it's okay. I don't like the having to wear the mask and stuff. But if you don't wear that, go ahead, don't wear one. See how it goes. If you're blowing black snot out of your nose, be snooting and sneezing, your eyes will be all jacked up. You get yourself sick, you'll get a sore throat from it. Yep, you will. You get some funky fungus down your throat, some mold. Man, I hope that guy doesn't come out this week and want me to. As soon as I pull away, my phone will be ringing. Or wait, hold on, this has happened before. Get back in the car, and the neighbor just like left me a message. No, just freaks. <laughs> All right, it rained. It's kind of chilly, and I don't care. I am not going to worry about it. I'm not even gonna load up. I'm just gonna take the girls, go at my own pace. I think I might go have me a little tan, maybe a little snack, go to the bank. Actually, swing by my insurance and make a payment talk to him about adding something else and then um, then I'll get some stuff done see this guys it'd be a nice day it's not a rush I can get it all done this week because I am skipping yards a lot of them you know don't really need it and then the ones with the leaves you know they need it look at my yard You know, I bet if I go past those yards that I did um, yesterday, that rain last night probably knocked all the rest of the leaves down. It doesn't even look like I was there, but it's cool. I might actually shave today too. Well, all these leaves are down. They must have blew away. Not that many here. It's kind of tall. The yard got skipped last week. Oops. <laughs> no. Hey, look how this yard looks now that the um, rejects got evicted and they cleaned it up. Almost looks normal. Pick up the trash. Couldn't talk out there. The wind is um, pretty crazy. So this is my first yard of the day. I took care of a lot of business, did some things, and um, now I'm just gonna start it. I'm not in a rush anymore. I kind of am, but I'm kind of not. You know what I mean? I, I, I can pull this week off, and at this point it doesn't even matter. You just kind of just work as long as you can work. Does that make sense? <laughs> you, When you get out there, you get out there, and you go until the sun goes down or whatever your schedule dictates nobody is in a panic to have their yard done for any any reason they just want it to look good finish out the year so it's kind of kind of just up to me really now some of them they don't care if I'm still there every week some every other week some of them are just like just do whatever you think you know and I don't know it's, I know you guys get it all set up different than me that's just how I do it I like the freedom I like to be able to just um, do my own thing. And my people are cool with me. 
when they're new customers, you, you kind of have, you have to go through a whole spring and fall before a new customer will understand what's going on. Like your new customers might not know if you're even gonna come back next year, but after you do, then they'll just expect you. And once they've seen what you do in the fall, they'll just, they'll just expect that every time. So until then, it's kind of like a feeling out process, but I got it made because I have so many people that just know what's up. They know what the program's all about here. Just let Greg go, he'll do his thing. He might step on the neighbor's property and get into a fight, but you know, it's okay. He'll still be back, back there with a the camera, either Friday or Saturday this week. Well, I'll always have a camera going there. Matter of fact, you guys want me to take a camera wherever I go? Because I mean, I did all kinds of stuff this morning. I could have, um, I could have showed you that. Would you like to just see like um, another video called "This Week with Geek to Freak"? <laughs> because I'm going to be running out of lawns here in a month. You know, I could take you around and show you what I do throughout the week. That's not lawn care related. If you want to see that, give um, this video a comment down below and let me know. That's all. Just let me know. I can do that. I can show you stuff. I can take you. I can show you how I go tan in a tanning bed. I can take you in AT&T and I look at phones and pay my bill. Because I don't have that stuff come directly out of my account. A few things I don't. I could go into all that stuff. I could talk to you about how I have my life set up and why. And what I like to do and where I like to eat. Where I sleep. <laughs> Okay, freaks, I have a fun one for you. Oh yeah, it's fun. It's real fun. You got a mixture of leaves, pine needles, pine cones, sticks. It's pretty bad down here. This is that yard. One, two, three, four, five of these trees right here. And you got all this other crap. The wind's blowing. Normally when I pull up and I see something like this, I just keep on going. I don't have time to deal with this anymore, but I've been doing this yard for years, so I will continue to take care of it just because I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I don't have enough time today to do all this before I pick up the girls, so what I'm gonna to do today. Keep in mind, I've done this yard with um, all different types of equipment in my life, because I've done this for you know a long time, this yard, I don't even know how many years. But I remember one time when my X mark was broken, I had to just use a 21 inch for a cleanup like this right here. And then all I did was just with a handheld blower, blew everything out into this boulevard and just mulched it back and forth with a small mower, back and forth, back and forth, dust everywhere. And it took like 10 passes down and back, you know, 10 complete boulevard wipeouts with the 21 inch to get it to um, kind of go down. And it was just powdered, the whole, the whole, um, whole boulevard was just powdered, like nothing could grow there next year. <laughs> but I've also blew it all into a tarp and hauled it off before. And then I have also just, she had me come more often one year and I was able to just keep it down before they all fell, but they, too much came down already. So what I'm gonna do right now today is I'm gonna blow um, most of this stuff out to the boulevard here to see what I'm working with. I'm gonna actually scoop up the five empty cans that I have because I have to go to the dump. So I'm gonna fill them up with the rake that's gonna get down and just shovel it in and drop those off tonight when I'm going to the dump. That way when I do come back here, that's just a little bit less that I have to do. But there's no easy way about it. There's no perfect way. You can go out and spend 5,000 bucks or someone says, you need a Billy Goat vac thing or whatever. For a $50 yard twice a year, come on now, you know? I don't need to go spending thousands of dollars. I just have to um, work my ass off a couple times, right? Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. I'll let you watch me rake some of this up. 
And here we go. So I blew all the leaves off the front half of the yard into this boulevard. And it turned out to be more than it looked like when I first started. I was like, uh-oh. So here I come down here. And there's some big piles. What I'm doing right now is riding a wheelie. Yeah, I have the front end popped up so I can go over these big piles. Not just so that I don't bog the mower down, but so that they don't shove all these leaves and you know pine needles up into my deck and pop my belt off. Now, I actually took the deck cover off the mower too to make it have more room under there because if it's on there, everything can build up under there tighter and get compact and it can snap the belt, not just knock it off a pulley. So I didn't want that to happen because that could really spell the end of the day. <laughs> but this was the last thing I was going to do for the day and I didn't want to go to the dump either. So I was just trying to maybe make a little bit of improvement and get ahead of the game for tomorrow. So that's what I'm doing right now. Now you think, man, you're making this yard ugly. Well, it was already ugly. Right here where I'm going down, this boulevard, what you want to call a boulevard, it's actually flush with the road. So like the asphalt goes right up into the grass, but somebody had put rock down at one point too, and cars park along here. So it's actually like a parking area. It's flush with the street but rock and um, grass growing in it. And also dusty, dirty, and it's where all the leaves have been. Just everything just piles up here. So is it really a yard? Is it really a street, parking? I don't know because anybody and everybody uses it for different purposes. I see um, cars parked along here that aren't belonging to her and she's always like that car has been parked out there for a week I'm like yeah I saw it here last week you know but it could be for a neighbor and stuff because some of these people around here have um so many people like maybe their kids are driving cars now they just use this area too so I'm really not affecting anything like the growth of the grass or dirtying anything up because this is sort of I don't know what you call it like common ground which is cool for me because I get to take advantage of it being this wacky little area where I can just mulch stuff up and kind of leave it overnight and come back tomorrow, right? <laughs> and so am I really making any progress here? I think so because I'm chopping all these leaves up into more of a powder so they're not just sitting on the lawn. They're out here contained and they're not going to blow back up in there because they're not going to be all fluffy and roll around as good once they get mulched up a couple wax here. Now, obviously, this is a dust storm, okay? And while I was doing this, a car pulled up across the street and pulled up into their little common ground area. And they had their windows down. And they were younger people. They weren't paying attention to what they were doing. And, um, you know, I, I was like, thinking to my in my head oh man this isn't good because i need to stop now right but i didn't stop <laughs> not for a few more minutes i went ahead and made a couple more good passes before i did and i thought they had to have seen me but you know some people don't really pay attention to their surroundings and if dust got in their car hey i don't know what to tell them i was here working first you know and maybe roll your windows up before you um go in the house <laughs> Now, here I am with the two cans that I had still empty from my day's work. I thought, I'm going to scoop up as much of this as I can while I'm still here and make it easier on myself for when I come back because this is a work in progress. Now, when you have these mulched up leaves like this, you think, oh, the can's full. Well, no, it's not really full for a while. <laughs> you can keep shoving it in there, pushing it down with your hands. Heck, you can even like stand in the can if you want to smash it down real good. It'll get really heavy when you get it compacted down there, but you can get a lot of this stuff up in just two cans. You see, it's cool having a few lawns each week that you can just push off to whatever day. It's real convenient for you because they don't care as long as you get the job done and they're not like prestige accounts. And that way you can do this and make extra money, max out your day, and it's not all stressful where one thing goes wrong and it's a total bust. 
Now right here, I kinda got the front car that's parked over there. You can see it there. That's the one that had its windows down. <laughs> and um, at the front of the boulevard up here, I didn't mess with it. You know, it was too close to my truck. I had too much stuff going on in this area. And I actually got the other cans off the truck too that had some stuff in it from today. And I went ahead and topped them off. So I made some improvement. I'll be back. It will be good. You can see like this sidewalk, mud slides down on there, you know. So like I said, this isn't a prestige account. They just want me to work at it and do things. And it's one that I can kind of hit and miss. And it's very flexible, like I, no pressure. And it's good to have a handful of those every week because that can mean a few hundred extra dollars. Okay, I don't want to film this property, but I might give you a little sneak peek of it. Here's the deal. All right, first thing I did was, well, I just cleaned that out of the gutter. I blew all this stuff up into the yard. Blew everything out from around it. The backyard's not bad at all. Just a little bit of stuff here. See the sprinkler heads? These are the neighbors. Look at this one. It's been hit. But not by me. I don't go over the property lines. You know that. <laughs> what I'm going to do here is I have four trash cans. And I told him my price, what I'll do. And he said, I'll give you extra if you just molt all the way over to their driveway. So there you go. I'm going across property lines, but they're actually paying me to do that, and they don't care. So it's just weird when you run into a super freak. So I'm going to mulch all this, I'm going to mulch all this stuff up, and then blow it all back out into the street, mulched up, and scoop up my four cans worth. And that should be about right, and it'll make a big improvement. And there's plenty more to come, plus all of theirs. All of theirs, all of theirs, all of theirs. It's one of those streets. So here's how I do it. Here we go with the Snapper Pro 36 inch and we are going to hit this big pile of them right in the middle and we are going to pop a little wheelie so we do not push them like a snow plow off into the neighbor's yard. Although the neighbor's yard was filled with leaves anyway that we're going to probably blow back over later. <laughs> but this is one of those things. Just help them out. Just come on by. The yard really doesn't need cut. Just get rid of some of these leaves in front. And I'm going to try and do it without hauling anything away or making it a big production. So this is a minimalist way to do it. I developed this technique many moons ago because I've cut 20 to 25,000 lawns solo in Granite City, Illinois in my life and this was done out of necessity so I still use it when I'm in the middle of a day and I end up with a bunch of leaves. The yard doesn't need cut, they just need the help so here I am and I don't want to have to go to the dump afterward. And for some of you, you might not have a dump that is free of charge. I pay a one year fee and then I get to go as many times as I want. And I know most of you do not have that option. But still, I don't want to drive to the other side of town to dump things, right? So while I'm in the neighborhood, I'm going to hit this one and I'm going to fill up my four cans and then go to the next yard and hope that it doesn't need anything <laughs> taken away because, you know, I've, obviously I knew which yard I was going to next and it's one where there aren't any trees around and it was just a mow and barely trim and go. So right now, back to this one, I'm making sure I don't put anything back up into the mulch that I already blew out. Oh, and by the way, that mulch bed was lava rock, and I hate lava rock. You go through there with your um, blower, and you blow it all out into the grass. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to suck up one of those in your mower. Them lava rocks, they just rise right up under your deck, and pew, they go flying out. They'll hit a car two houses down if you're not careful. So, lava rock, all bad in my books. 
Now back to this freaky technique. As you can see, I'm doing the pullback move right here. <laughs> I'm going back over it backwards so that I do not blow it back over the section that I just mowed. And um, I'm really just wanting to hit these things over and over and mulch them down to not a total powder because then it would all be in the grass and I couldn't get it out and it would make bare spots. But just you're taking the thickness off of them so they don't roll around and blow all over the place. And you want to hurry up and hit the big thick areas first because I've blown them all out into the middle of the yard. And then all of a sudden a gust of wind comes and blows them all right back before I even get to go two passes down them, right? You're like, oh yeah, here we go. And you get one in, you turn around, you come back and poof, they're all back in the you know flower beds. And you're going, oh my God, it's going to be a bad day. But that's the day you got to mow. Hey, not every day is the perfect time, <laughs> but you can still do stuff, all right? And right here, you can see, if I was to just keep going over and mulch them all into powder right there, I'm not going to get all that out of the grass. But if I just, just keep hitting it like this, and now you see the big pile is closer to the edge. It's not picture perfect yet, but... um. You know, things are getting better. And look at my cans out in the street. They're just waiting. Can I do it? Four cans? Yeah, of course I can do it. I'm pretty good at, like, guesstimating things after all these yards and years. And also, um, if it was a little more than four cans, well, then I might have to blow some back in the yard or um, just pray that it blows across the street when I'm gone. But the reality is the leaves from across the street are actually going to blow into this yard. So this yard does seem to be um, downwind from the whole neighborhood. You can see in the background there, it just comes around the street and turns here, right? Then it goes up and it turns and goes back out. So it's a horseshoe and I'm right at the end of the horseshoe. So everything blows down both those streets and here you are at the end of the wind tunnel. <laughs> but it's really just their front yard. Luckily, their backyard doesn't get any leaves and that's awesome. So one thing I will say when you are getting to a point where you have enough lawns to survive on, right? You got your, your business is full time. And now you're picking and choosing. I'm going to say it again. Make sure you get the variety that you like. Turn down some yards, okay? You don't want a yard that has four oak trees in the back where you don't have the proper equipment to get it out of there and it's just too much to mulch and things like that. So you're going to have to walk away from some. And if you have too many lawns with shrubs and hedges that take you like an hour or more to take care of um, and they want it three times a year, well, if you had every yard like that, you're going to have to have less lawns because what day are you going to be able to schedule all that in? And if you just try and do one or two every day, I mean, you're, you're, you're adding two hours to your day. So it just, I don't know what I'm saying here is, see how I got the rake out and I'm doing this? You don't want to have to do a whole bunch of these, but you do want a few so that you can be out when the season is getting over with and still have work. It's hard to balance, but once you get enough full-time clients and you're going to be able to survive as a full-time lawn service, then you have to get picky. And right, right at this stage right here where I'm you know, raking this up right now, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking... I sure don't need any yards that have all of this on the front and twice as much in the back. No, not in one stop. I don't want that. Now that's a good place to be in your business and it takes some time to get there, but it's very possible for everyone. And I'm going to say your first year, if you really do it correctly and nowadays you would be advertising online word of mouth you let everybody know and you have to not be scared to talk to people you can go out and hang flyers yourself you can do some mailers you know that's a whole nother game i can talk to you about that too there are certain techniques that allow you to generate more business and one is being able to put a price on their yard with their flyer or with the mailer and it's hard if you're just going to blanket a neighborhood you can't put the price because the yards are all different right this one has hedges this one has trees this one has a small gate on the back you can't just price them you know in a whole area 
unless they're cookie cutter houses and you know condos and things like that but in a regular old town that wasn't just built in 2020 or something <laughs> were they building houses in 2020 well not for a little while they weren't but my point is you can walk down the street and have a flyer that says forty dollars have a flyer that says fifty dollars have one that says 45 35 whatever it is right and you walk down and you can eyeball them real quick and stick that one on the door and it looks like it was a personal quote right you boom you hang that on the door and you walk away they got a 40 dollar one on theirs two doors down well you skip the neighbor because they have like four big dogs in the backyard that you don't want to tangle with so you skip them then you go to the next yard and then you put fifty dollars on theirs right because it's a bigger yard yeah see here's and you get a higher turnover ratio i put out a hundred flyers and i would get three accounts because every flyer that i walked and hung on a door had a price on it the people weren't scared to call me they knew what to expect they knew that it was going to be 40 bucks they weren't in their head going oh man i wonder if he charges 50 i can't afford that right they have a flyer that says 40 bucks so they're going to call well if they need a you know a lawn service but they're more likely to call with a price so that's how you get around that other than that back to my point your first year you can really build a giant business but you're going to take on all the wacky lawns okay you're going to take on some problem cases pita lawns pain in the ass that's right <laughs> but then it won't be long before you learn to turn down a few things you're like nah i got enough of those okay i have enough small gates on the backyard a big backyard oh i know better than to go to any more obstacle courses right 14 bird baths you go oh who's got 14 bird baths i've seen it okay this lady had a bird bath like like fetish or something okay <laughs> it was out of control you learn to walk away from certain yards but at first you'll take anything and that'll teach you a good lesson not sure if i showed you the start time or not this looks like it took me an hour and five minutes so according to my phone so it's not really you know a super fast job it's going to take you longer because you are going back and forth over stuff then you have to break it up you know but um hour and five minutes 50 bucks is that a big deal well you know people get paid more but that's pretty good money in my books dude you know pretty much basic equipment and you know they're happy i went over mulched up their stuff it's a lot better off you know they're i'll be back too okay so think of it like this can you do four of these in a day yes you can hour and five minutes right so four and a half hours 200 bucks think of it like that the money will add up over time if you can pull it off. But even with the shortened days, you can do more than four yards, man. You can do it. All right, let's take a look at the dump this week and compare it to next week. Oh, it's starting to fill up. Just wait. Right there, it's going to be all the way up over here. Way up here. Oh my gosh, freak. Today is Friday, but it's not fun Friday. Ha! 
high winds and very, very cold. Oh man, oh man. Um, I might just cancel work today. I have that option. I have that option. I think I might do that. What was that? Yeah, I think today might be canceled. I might do a few over the weekend. We'll see. I'm not in a rush. It's, um, it's that time of year. I can't handle that wind today. How can you do leaves in weather like that? Really? You could. I have done it, but not today. I gotta get the Halloween party all set up. That's right. Big kid festival tonight. Everybody's coming over with kids. We're gonna have ourselves a Halloween hootenanny. <laughs>